Hello and welcome back to a new message of faith. My name is Edouard Sereduk and today we're going to talk about security in times of anxiety. The world and the news is talking so much about coronavirus during these times that it's almost like a continuous song. It's overwhelming and it's damaging to us. Some of us need to watch or listen to the news, but even if you have to listen to the news, try to listen to the minimum necessary, maybe just the headlines, but do not continue browsing through your social media and listen to every little thing, every piece of news, you know, there's a lot of fake news out there. And if you do have to listen to them, at least end up with focusing back on Jesus. Talk about Jesus to your family. Sing to Him. Worship Him. And declare His word over you and your family. You know, when the people of Israel were in the wilderness and they needed water, Moses just hit the rock and water came out abundantly, rivers of refreshing waters in the middle of the desert. Who is that rock for us today? Our Lord Jesus Christ. Another time when the people of Israel came to the bitter waters of Marah, the Lord showed Moses a tree that he cast into the waters and they became sweet. Amazing. There God made a covenant with Israel, telling them that He will not put on them any of the diseases He brought on the Egyptians. Why? Because He is the Lord that heals them. Then on another occasion, serpents, and if you want to call them corona serpents, they came on them and Moses told them to look at the bronze serpent that God told him to lift up and they were healed while they were looking. Imagine that they have to keep their eyes focused on the bronze serpent while the venomous little serpents were still crawling on their bodies and on their feet. In the same way, we do not know for sure how this virus hit the world, but what is certain is that the world is now literally on its knees by something that cannot be even seen. And I'm here to tell you that this virus will not rain. It seems like it's raining because it's on the lips of everyone. People are talking only about it. But let me tell you this. The Bible says that we reign in life. We the believers, the new creations. Romans 5.17 shows us the way we reign in life. It says this. For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Amen. Such a powerful verse. If this sickness, COVID-19, reigns through the one, or it seems like raining, much more of those that receive or receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, which is right standing with God, they reign in life over any circumstance or sickness. When you are righteous in God's eyes, all the blessings pertaining to righteousness belong to you and me. They fall on you. On one that is righteous, sin or death has no right or claim, no legal right. This righteousness is a gift. How do you receive a gift? You just say thank you. Do you earn a gift? No. Do you have to pay for the gift? No, of course not. Someone else paid for the gift. Is this gift a reward for good deeds or for something that you do? No, it is a gift. Jesus said that, bef that before he returns, what is going to happen? There will be plagues, pestilences that are not caused by him. He just said what is going to happen. The devil is the one doing them because he knows the end is near. His end is near. And he is trying to increase his aggression and plans towards humans 
ahead of his time. And our job as believers is to lift Jesus high because the world needs him. Death is behind us. It's not a factor. The Bible tells us in Luke 21 verse 28 that when all these things begin to happen, we are to look up and lift up our heads because our redemption draws near. Now what redemption? The redemption of our bodies because our spirit has been recreated completely and our soul and mind is being renewed here on earth. But we will have bodies of glory like Jesus. Bodies that never grow old or die. Now what age will our bodies have? Maybe the age at which Adam was created or the age of Jesus when he started his ministry. But for sure we will not be old because aging and sickness is part of the curse. We will not be able to die anymore. We will live forever. All these signs are the birth pangs of the coming of the Messiah. When the world is so afraid, we look at them and we do not have to fear what they fear. I will say that again and strongly. Do not fear what the world fears. We are protected. This is one of the most repeated phrases of Jesus towards his disciples. Do not fear. Do not let your hearts be troubled. We have no need to fear. But in the meanwhile, be kind, be wise. Of course, because we live in the world, we still live in the world. Do not go on purpose and shake people's hands and go crazy because you think you have faith. You might have faith and you might be safe, but others might not have the same faith as you and you might cause them harm. For example, I believe that Jesus could not die even when he was a baby because he was sinless. He had to voluntarily give up his life so he could be killed. I don't know if you have a thought about that. In John 10 verses 17 to 18, Jesus said that he gives his life to take it back and that no one takes it from him. But he gives it himself and he has authority to give it and has authority to take it back. Even though the baby Jesus could not be killed, yet the angel told Joseph to take the baby and flee into Egypt and wait there until the king dies. The king Herod was out to destroy this child. The thing is this, even if 10,000 soldiers had come upon the baby Jesus, he could not have died. Death can come only on someone who has sinned. The Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament could not be destroyed even in the enemy's hands. If anyone tried to destroy it, God destroyed by it. So the, word, the, so the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the fulfillment of that Ark of the Covenant, could not be destroyed. Yet there is a humility about him. He has become a man and God allowed him to go through all these human processes like us, to go here and there, to get tired, to sit at the well. And we see his parents took him to Egypt instead of fighting the king or calling for myriads of angels to protect Jesus. They did it like any other man. So there are times when God will tell you, do not go, do not go there or there. You might say, no, 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 Psalm 91 is with me. My friend, the God who wrote Psalm 91 is the same God who prompted you not to go there or in some other place and gave you no peace. You need to let yourself guided and led by the peace inside. Let's, uh, let's read the passage from Luke 14 verses 15 to 17 where it says this. Now when one of those who sat at the table with him heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then he said to him, A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time 
to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. A great supper is not just a 10 courses meal, but probably 20 or 30 course, courses meal. And God's servant, the Holy Spirit, was sent to invite everyone and tell them to come because all things were ready. When God told Israel to go into the promised land, there were enemies in that land. And 40 years earlier, 10 of the spies gave a bad report about the land. And as a result, the majority believed them and never entered the land. And all the while, God had already defeated the enemies. He had put fear in the enemies' hearts. And the enemies were actually wondering how come it took them 40 years to come into the land. We know that from the lips of Rahab. She was wondering what took them so long. Because just a shout brought the walls of Jericho down and they could have done that earlier. But fear stopped them from entering in. And what's consuming the world right now is fear. People are making decisions out of fear. People are so afraid. Listen, even if you get this virus, you will not die in Jesus' name. Believe God. Believe God not to get it. But if you do get it, believe God for complete healing and restoration. There are two ways of conquering this thing or this virus. First, God's way and will is that you walk in divine protection and health all the time and not be afraid. If God tells you to go somewhere, except for those places where they advise you not to go, then go and do not be motivated by fear. Be led by the Holy Spirit and follow the witness of the Spirit. Second, if you got the virus by, the virus by any chance, God's will for you is to be healed and not die. So everyone is invited to this great supper where everything is ready and you do not have to pay anything for it or work for it. Everything is prepared for you and it's free. You only need to come. That's all. What was their response? What was, was this, these people's response? Luke 14 verse 18 tells us this. But they all with one accord began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it. I ask you to have me excused. Now who is so dumb to buy a ground and then go see it? It's a lousy excuse. Imagine the God of heaven spreading a feast and man does not have to buy or put in labor. All things are now ready. Let's read also verse 19 from Luke 14. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, or in our days five cars, and I am going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Imagine this, he already bought the cars and then he does the drive test. It's a lousy, lame, and pathetic excuse. And this is man's reaction in general. When God says it's free, they do not want it. They would rather earn, sweat, suffer, fast, pray long hours, do all kinds of hard things instead of just taking. Salvation is what's on the plate for us at this supper. Salvation for today. That brings me to something else I want to say. You may or may not have heard it yet, but there are people who will tell you, how can you claim Psalm 91? On what basis can you do that? And the idea is that you are you and I am me. A bishop, a pastor, a reverend. I don't have anything against pastors. I can claim Psalm 91, but you, how can you claim Psalm 91? It's almost like there are some loops for you to jump through. There are some hurdles for you to jump over. There is always something. There is always a but. 
when God says something and you cannot really enjoy anything that He gives in that situation. They say Psalm 91 is only for those, and here is where they fill in the blanks based on their ignorance. It's only for those who have not sinned, for example, or those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. You would be amazed how many ignorant people supply a lot of answers today. You would be surprised to know how many people that know nothing. I'm sorry to say that, but they talk the most. Let's read Psalm 91 verse 1. It says this, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So there is a secret place, as this verse tells us. But what is that secret place? They will say it's a special place of intimacy with God, correct? The problem with intimacy is this. How intimate is intimate before you know you are intimate and intimate enough to qualify for Psalm, for Psalm 91 verse 1? Usually they, they will try to tell you when you are ready. How are we to understand this secret place in Psalm 91 verse 1? The Hebrew word for dwell is yashav, which means sit or sit down. And in Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible shows us that that is already the reality of the new creation. Let's read Ephesians 2 verses 4 to 5. But God, who is rich in mercy because of His great love, with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. So God is rich in mercy. All these religious ideas that we have in our head about God, that He is angry, revengeful, they cannot coexist with what the Bible says here in this passage, that God is rich in mercy. Can, can anyone of you find anywhere in the Bible a passage where it says that God is rich in wrath or rich in anger? Does God have anger? Yes, of course. But for, for the believer, no. Because Jesus exhausted all God's anger at the cross and He delivered us from the wrath to come. From the beginning, God's heart was full of mercy. Even in the Old Testament, He is rich in mercy. And this is an age of mercy. Not only He has mercy, but He is rich in mercy, wealthy in mercy. Then the passage we read says this, Because of His great love with which He loved us, not just love, but great love, this whole plan of redemption was motivated by love. God loves you personally. And Ephesians 2 verse 6 says this, that He raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places, the invisible places in Christ Jesus, the spiritual realm. At the cross, we were crucified with Christ. That's where our identity started. We were buried with Christ and raised up together with Christ. We were in Him. We are no longer outside of Him, but in Him. And whatever it was done to Jesus, it was done to us as well. Just as what was done to Adam, whatever Adam did, you and I shared in it. Whether you like it or not, because of what Adam did, death came into all mankind. And God hates death. And he calls it an enemy. The last enemy to, put, to be put under feet, under our feet, is death. At the cross, God gave us a new ancestor, a new federal head instead of Adam. And that head is the last Adam, Jesus Christ. After he, ra he raised up, he made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we are there already in the secret place. Would you agree with me that there is no greater secret place than Christ Himself? In the Old Testament, yes, there was a secret place because Christ had not come yet. 
Would you agree with me that you cannot be in a better place than the risen Christ? We are now seated in Christ. And before any warfare, which is in Ephesians chapter 6, you have to learn to sit. I have to learn to sit. How well you sit is how well you overcome the powers of darkness. How well you sit is how well you walk as a believer on the earth. When the devil wants to affect your walk, he does not focus on your walk per se, but on your rest. When a new challenge comes, what do I do? I sit down. The faith perspective is this. I am not trying to overcome this, but it has already been overcome for me. And my posture of faith is rest. The more you rest, the more you see the result. John 15 verse 5, uh, Jesus said this, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Simple, right? Abide in him means rest in him. You are in him already. Stop trying to get in him when you are already in him. Stop trying to get in a room when you are already there. So every fresh challenge, even the COVID-19, what does it mean? Let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verses 20 to 21. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. Amen. In this passage, the Bible says that Christ has been seated at God's right hand far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named in all ages. Now, how far is Christ from COVID-19? Far above. But you are in Christ. You and me, we are in Christ. So then, how far are you from COVID-19? Far above. That's right. The reason Christ sat down and you are seated with Him. You do not sit until your, your whole work is finished. Jesus Christ sat when He finished His whole work. The Old Testament priests never sat down. They were always serving and their work would never finish. On the other hand, Jesus offered one sacrifice for sins forever, once and for all, and he sat down. His work is efficacious for all eternity. What are we waiting now for? Ephesians 2 verse 7 tells us what we're waiting for. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Jesus tells you, sit down with me in this cinema because I'm about to give you a show. And the show is about to start. What is this show? The exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness towards us, you and me, in Christ Jesus. Even though there is a day of vengeance, that's right, it's coming for the world at the second coming of Christ, not now. And at the, and a, a judgment day, a final judgment day, we are in Christ. And what we look forward to in the ages to come, including this one, is the show of the exceeding riches of His grace. So as a principle, if you want to see grace in front of you, sit down first. Now let's go back to Psalm 91. If someone tries to tell you that you need to do something to be or to get in that secret place and qualify for God's protection from that psalm, you can tell him that you are already seated in Christ. Unless you tell me that the secret place is Christ, then I do not want to sit in that place. What the psalmist dreamed of is our reality today. During this time of challenge and anxiety, 
you do not have to cling on to protection or to, or to struggle to get it. You just need to realize and acknowledge with your mind and heart that God loves you with a great love. And 2 Thessalonians verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 3 says this, But the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. What keeps me from evil is not my smartness or intelligence, is not avoiding people who are coughing maybe, is not making sure that I have all the knowledge about the places where I am going to, but it is the Lord's faithfulness. People say, uh, are you sure you are faithful enough to qualify for Psalm 91's protection? It is not even my faithfulness. It is not my faithfulness that keeps me from evil, but His faithfulness. The Lord is faithful to keep you from evil. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your faithfulness. Rest in His faithfulness. It's amazing. When you see Him being faithful, you also have faith. But you are not conscious of your faith. Why? Because your eyes are on His faithfulness. Amen? May the Lord bless you and keep you in faith, in rest, and may He guide you by His Holy Spirit and realize that like the people of Israel, when they had to focus their physical eyes on the bronze serpent so that they could get rid of the serpents that were uh, crawling around them. In the same way today, we need to focus our minds and thoughts on what Jesus did on the cross. He paid a high price so that you and me would have complete victory over any sickness, disease, virus. This virus has no legal right over you and me if you are a new creation. Why? Because you have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And sickness has no legal right, no claim. So talk to your body if you have the symptoms or even before. Talk to your body and tell it, body, I do not allow you, I do not permit, I do not give you permission in Jesus' name to get any virus or disease or to accommodate any virus. I refuse to be sick in the name of Jesus. You have no claim, no legal right over my body in the, G in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you. Amen.